Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. And here's your news now. favorite shopping experience is about to get a lot better as the owners of the King of Prussia Mall announced construction of a 140,000 square foot indoor corridor to connect the plaza and the court. Connecting the two malls will enhance the experience that much more. They also plan to add another ring of stores around the mall. After giving nearly a million dollar buyout, former Philadelphia school superintendent Arlene Ackerman has filed for an unemployment. Michael Ladiz, head of school police officers union, says the news is not sitting well with people. Based on her former salary, she is eligible for the maximum of $575 per week. The Occupy Philly protest carries on after Philadelphia's Sunday deadline to move all the encampment tents passed last weekend. City officials believe the protest is dwindling, but the occupiers remain as three people were arrested for possibly setting up a safe house in Dilworth Plaza. Renovations of Dilworth Plaza will begin as soon as the protesters are cleared out. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Liz. Earlier this week, American Airlines parent company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection as it seeks to get rid of massive debt due to labor agreements and higher fuel prices. American is the nation's third largest airline and will continue business as usual as it tries to reorganize. American was the only major non-discount airline that didn't file for bankruptcy protection after 9-11. Dr. Conrad Murray has been sentenced to four years in prison for involuntary manslaughter of the late King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Although he has been sentenced to four years, it was automatically reduced to two years under the Assembly Bill 109. A hearing will take place on the 23rd of January to determine how much restitution he owes the Jackson estate. And now let's go around the world with Allie. International companies are preparing for the worst as a possible collapse of the euro and the breakup of the eurozone. As European leaders have failed to control the sovereign debt crisis, the United Kingdom is warning its citizens to be prepared for massive riots and potential violence if a collapse does occur. The NATO airstrike that killed 24 Pakistani soldiers over the weekend may have been a calculated maneuver by the Taliban, according to the preliminary U.S. military reports. The apparent case of mistaken identity, the U.S. Afghan patrol was attacked the day prior and falsely took a military outpost as a militant encampment. The mistake enraged the Pakistani government and has called the strike as a deliberate act of aggression. Norwegian mass murderer Andres Breivik will not face any jail time for his twin attacks that killed 77 people and injured 151 as he has been declared criminally insane. Breivik will stay be be tried, but will likely go to psychiatric care hospital rather than prison. And that was your trip around the world. Now here's Jimmy with this week's Tech Connection. Thanks, Allie. In the quest for life on other planets, NASA successfully launched the Curiosity Mars rover from Cape Canaveral on November 26th. Once it arrives at the Red Planet eight and a half months from now, Curiosity's main mission will be to investigate whether Mars could ever have hosted microbial life. Besides weighing in at one ton, the car-sized mover will have the ability to drill for samples inside Martian rocks, a first for any Mars rover. Eight years in planning, this is NASA's most sophisticated and ambitious mission to Mars, and has cost $2.5 billion to date. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has begun investigating new lithium-ion battery fires in General Motors' electric car, the Chevrolet Volt. During government crash testing, one Volt battery pack caught fire and another was found to emit smoke and sparks after a serious impact. Six months ago, a fire erupted in a vault that was being stored in a parking lot for test facility in Burlington, Wisconsin. At the time, the fire was severe enough to cause several other parked cars nearby to catch fire as well. GM said in a statement that their electric car is safe and does not present undue risk as part of normal operation or immediately after a severe crash. The government investigation is still ongoing. AT&T and T-Mobile may not be merging after all. On November 24th, AT&T said it is no longer seeking approval for the merger from the FCC. The wireless giant then set aside $4 billion to cover the breakup fee it will owe Deutsche Telekom, T-Mobile's parent company. Although the merger may not be over, many ind industry insiders believe it may hurt both companies if the deal does not go through. AT&T would not be able to build on its next generation wireless network, while T-Mobile would have to figure out a new way to stay afloat with a business that is losing revenue and 
customers in droves. Only time will tell if this telecommunications union is meant to be or if it is dead in the water. That's all I have for now. Stay plugged in right here for the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Allie. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's go to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Liz. It's that time of year once again where you may find yourself buried in your textbook studying for finals. Finals week is around the corner, so here's a helpful tip to help you prepare. Don't wait until the night before to study or write that final paper. Don't even start studying two nights before. When it comes to finals, whether exams or papers, you need to pace yourself. Start studying or researching at least two weeks before the exam or due date. That way, you can take your time and be sure you are covering everything, as well as getting clarification on anything that may seem confusing. If you start preparing for your final in advance, you'll most likely do a lot better than if you have just studied the night before. That's your tip of the week. Back to you, Allie and Liz. Thanks, Danielle. And now here's Felicia with your Album of the Week. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your Album of the Week. Recently, rap artist slash singer Drake just released his second studio album titled Take Care. This album features collaborations from artists such as Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Rihanna, and many more. This album definitely shows a more sensitive side of Drake, but don't be confused with his sensitivity. He definitely shows his confident, cocky side in songs such as Underground Kings, Lord Knows, and Headlines. Drake definitely shows a more intimate side of himself in this album. He talks about his past relationships with women, family, and friends. I give this album a four out of five stars, and if you're interested in purchasing Take Care, you can check it out on iTunes and be sure to turn to tune into WIBF 89.1 FM The Burn to hear your favorite student DJs during the week. Back to the news desk. And now here's Mary Kate for your weekly sports update. Cabrini men and women's basketball teams are getting off to an exceptional start. The Cabrini men's basketball team, who were ranked number 14th in the preseason D3Hoops.com poll, moved up to the 11th spot. The men started out their season defeating Haverford College and Widener University. They continued the performance as they took their first home CSAC defeat against Newman University. All-American senior Corey Lemons recorded 21 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists, following senior John Boyd with 25 points and 7 boards. The Cavaliers are now 3-0 overall and 1-0 in conference play. The Lady Cavs also won their first conference game, defeating Newman University 50-37. The Cavaliers' defense held the Knights to shooting just 18% from the field. Sophomore Brittany Sandoon contributed a team high of 13 points. Sophomore Annie Rivtuso added 9 points and 10 rebounds. As per professional sports, with a record of just 4 wins and 11 games, I have come to the conclusion that it's tough to be an Eagles fan. So, let's just move on and talk about how the NBA lockout is finally over. All you fans out there can actually look forward to watching the basketball again. The NBA will start its lockout delayed season with five games on Christmas Day. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to Allie and Liz. Thanks, Mary Kate. And now here's Melissa with your entertainment update. Thanks, ladies. So before Thanksgiving break, Break and Dawn hit theaters, and according to Box Office Moho, it stole the number one spot its opening weekend with a gross of $62.3 million. It continues to hold its place, but how long will it remain at that number one spot as other movies are released this holiday season? Also before break, here on campus, Catboard hosted the annual Mr. and Miss Cabrini pageant. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Corey Frazera, on set with Location. Here we are at the Mr. and Mrs. Cabrini pageant. People are taking their seats and ready for this exciting event. Before the show started, we went to the dressing room and caught up with some of the contestants. What's your talent? Me plus you. That's one time. Okay. Well, it's basically a mashup of Let Me Love You by Mario, One Time by Justin Bieber, and Sexy and I Know It. So, are you excited about trying to become Mr. Cabrini tonight? Uh, yeah, I am, I am excited. I mean, it's my second time. I was up sophomore year, I lost, so it's kind of like my redemption. It's my last time. The host, Brian O'Sullivan, opened the show performing a song full of humor to better introduce himself. Contestants were introduced wearing their Cabrini Spirit outfits. The talent performances consisted of lots of dancing. Some singing. Some rapping. And sword fighting? Yes sword fighting. Then, of course, some students had to be eliminated. 
Winners of the 2011 Mr. and Ms. Cabrini pageant are Matt Stewart and Lauren Borgia. Um, we're both seniors, so this is a way to like bang out our senior year and go out with a bang, so I'm really excited. Uh, I'm so happy that I won. This, um, a big shout out and a big thank you from the bottom of my heart from, Do from Dr. Bethany for nominating me. We handed over the crown to Matt Stewart and Lauren Briglio. <laughs> I thought it was an excellent ceremony. Heavy lies the crown, so I felt very relieved to finally pass it along to another generation. I am Melissa Webb. And I'm Corey Fuzera. Now back to the studio. Congratulations to Matt Stewart and Lauren Bariglio. In other entertainment news, the 2011 Victoria's Secret Fashion Show premiered this week with performances by Nicki Minaj, Maroon 5, Kanye West, and Jay-Z. And if you missed it, you can see it again December 14th on CBS. If you weren't able to get all of your shopping done with the amazing deals on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, students can enjoy some holiday shopping in New York this weekend with the SEAL office. The Grammy nominations are on their way, and many are predicting that Adele will sweep them. Well, we shall see. That's all of the entertainment updates I have this time. I am Melissa Webb. Now back to Ali and Liz. Thanks, Melissa. That's all we have for you this week. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Liz Scopoletti. And I'm Allie Jeter. Have a great week, Cabrini.